Hello everyone, Father Tony here with your chapel message for this week. And this week we have a special guest. Um, a couple of days ago I had a chance to interview Wendy Goldberg, who is a former president of Temple Israel and their former program director, and she's currently the executive director of the Tri-Faith Initiative in Omaha. And uh, I had a chance to sit down with her via Zoom and do a little interview about the uh, Jewish high holidays uh, that uh, we're in the midst of right now. Uh, Rosh Hashanah was just a couple of days ago, and um, coming up we have the holiday of Yom Kippur. And so I had a chance to sit down and talk with her a little bit about those uh, holidays. So here is uh, part of our uh, conversation together, and I hope that you enjoy this conversation and that you learn something from it. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it's really great to have you with us. Um, well, I asked you to join us today because I was looking on my calendar, and I look on my calendar, and this time of year, every year, I see these two Jewish holidays marked on there that are 10 days apart, Shana. Rosh Hashanah right. and Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, okay. And uh, so I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about each of those uh, special holidays and why they're important to the people of the Jewish faith. Maybe if you want to start uh, telling us a little bit about Rosh Hashanah. Sure. So Rosh Hashanah means, uh, Rosh is the, the head, or, or the head of the year. So it is our celebration of a new Jewish year. Um, so we have a, a lunar calendar. And um, so the, the date next to uh, the calendar that we standardly use um, is a little bit different. So it might fall in September or October, kind of depending on how those holidays match up. But it's um, intended to uh, remind us um, that, or, or, or in terms of our, our spiritual life, that this is an opportunity for, for newness, for beginnings. And, and a little bit like the secular observance of, of the new year where people um, clean house and, and set some resolutions and such, um, there's, there's some similar aspects to that. Um, the theology would be that we are asking to be inscribed in the book of life. And so it is a, a conversation that we're celebrating um, the beginning of something new. And we're also turning um, internally through what we've been um, intentional about with the hopes of healing. Um, it's customary to think about the sweetness of the new year and in that we commonly taste apples and honey dipped together. And um, that, that's symbolic um, of uh, what we hope the new year brings for each of us and the community and, and the world at, at large. Uh, and, and in our celebrations, um, I think a common uh, symbol that people have seen about Rosh Hashanah is a shofar. And the shofar is the lamb's horn, and, we, and uh, the, the calling of the ram's horn um, reminds us um, to gather uh, to be in community with each other and uh, to remind us that presence itself is important. So you use a, a literal horn of a ram is made into a horn that you blow and this trumpeting sort of sound comes out, right? Correct. Great. And all of the similar things to other holidays in terms of families gathering together um, in community to, to, to break bread together, to share a meal. And, you know, my, my uh, sister-in-law and her family plan to have a meal um, tonight to celebrate because we sell, start our holidays on the eve of, of a day. And then they will also have a meal uh, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. You know, my family is going to gather just for one meal tomorrow night. There's not an a exact right way to do that. There will be worship services um, at um, all of the denominations um, of congregations in Omaha and around the world um, starting tonight and then um, tomorrow as well, where we'll uh, gather together in prayer and uh, read from our sacred uh, scripts, which is from the Torah, and, and tell the stories of generations before us to remember the importance of this holiday. 
Yeah, so I should mention to everyone that we're recording this on Friday, um, the 18th. And so uh, Rosh Hashanah actually begins uh, at sunset tonight on Friday. Uh, all of you I know are watching this on Tuesday. So Rosh Hashanah has come and gone by the time you see this. But so it starts on a Friday night this year on the 18th. And then it goes through... Um, well, that's up, that, that's up for discussion as well. So um, in the Reformed congregation at Temple Israel, which is a denomination of Judaism that's perhaps more progressive in nature, we celebrate Rosh Hashanah for one day. The conservative or Orthodox movements celebrate Rosh Hashanah for two days. And the reason for that is to be generous in time for people who may not have heard the the calling of the ram's horn in an age where that was the only technology to get the word out. And so they've given a longer period of time to, to keep the book open, to be, to be inscribed in it, um, in case you missed the uh, first opportunity, you've got an extra day. Wow, okay. So now there's an app for that, so everybody can hear that <laughs> horn in one day, right? Wow. That's thinking. Cool. Right. Um, so is Rosh Hashanah then related in, in some way to the holiday that comes 10 days later? Is, is there some connection there between that and Yom Kippur? There is. So Yom Kippur is uh, a day of, it happens once a year, and it's our opportunity to use the days of Elul, of that whole month, but also the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, to ask for forgiveness between human beings. And so the custom is that you uh, would go to someone who you have uh, some regret or challenge with and be able to say to them, um, I would like to apologize uh, for whatever um, has come in harm's way between the two of you. And, and that you're doing your um, uh, reconciliation um, with those human relationships during this time so that when you come to Yom Kippur, the, the goal is for you to cleanse your relationship with God. Hmm. And, um, and so you come to that moment having taken some of the human elements away and for the moments of prayer during Yom Kippur to be um, of, of higher purpose. Okay, so it's, um, it's so like on the day of Yom Kippur, we fast. Um, and we fast from sundown of the night prior to sundown of the day of Yom Kippur. So that the holiday uh, that opens the Yom Kippur holiday is called Kol Nidre. That is the evening service. Yeah. And so what we say is that on, on Rosh Hashanah, it is written. And that means the book of life. Will your name be on the list of those who live through the coming year? And on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. Hmm. Um, anything else that we should know about these two very special days? You know, I think people often ask, like, how would you greet a friend who was Jewish who was celebrating the holiday? So if you were greeting someone who was celebrating Rosh Hashanah, even though we know that that has passed, it's certainly the season, so it would be appropriate to say Happy New Year. That, that, okay. That's easy enough. Um, if you wanted to try it out in Hebrew, you could say Shana Tova, which means a good year in Hebrew. Okay. Um, and another really beautiful thing to say to anyone who has, uh, who is a religious other to you, and you know that there is a holiday that is coming up that you don't have information about, you could say, I hope you have a meaningful holiday, right? It's kind of a, a, a good catch-all for mm -hmm. um, being an expression and being in relationship with someone who, who celebrates something different than you. And, and I also invite people who may know someone who is Jewish and is curious about that, to ask permission to say, could I ask you some questions about this? Um, I'm curious and I don't know, and I'd like to be able to honor your holiday in some way. That's great advice. Okay, well, thank you very much, Wendy. I really appreciate it. And um, if anybody wants to know more about Temple Israel or the Tri-Faith Initiative, um, I'll give you a chance for a little plug here. Where, where would they go to find out more about the Tri-Faith Initiative? Thank you. So we have a website, uh, trifaith.org, and uh, we would love you to, to check out some of our programming. And All right. Well, thanks again, Wendy. And Thank you. Uh, I'm wishing year. you a sweet new year. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.